This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. In Ukraine, fierce fighting continues to rage around the besieged industrial city of Severodonetsk, where sustained Russian artillery attacks this week have killed at least six civilians. Russian forces are also advancing on the city of Liman in the southeastern Donetsk region. The war began three months ago this week, but there appears to be little progress on peace talks. We're joined now by Patrick Coburn, award-winning journalist and columnist. He's the former Moscow correspondent for The Independent. Recent piece for Counterpunches headlined, London in Washington are being propelled by hubris, just as Putin was. Patrick, welcome back to Democracy Now! Explain. Well, this war began with a tremendous act of hubris, of arrogance by Vladimir Putin. He thought that uh, uh, his uh, newly equipped army, uh, which wasn't very that big, in fact, would be uh, greeted with uh, by the Ukrainian population, that the uh, Ukrainian government would collapse, that the Ukrainian uh, army would surrender. And we all know that exactly the opposite happened. I mean, this was a, a ludicrous gamble, never likely to succeed. But now what's so worrying is that I think you see hubris on the other side uh, of uh, with uh, the US, with uh, uh, Britain, um, other NATO states, and to somewhat to a lesser degree, the Ukrainian government also uh, in a triumphalist mood. Uh, they uh, are gloating over the very real Russian uh, defeats in uh, northern Ukraine. Um, and the policy objective has changed from defending Ukraine to a rather sort of messy objective, which sometimes is regime change in Moscow. Um, or it's um, return, um, fighting until uh, the uh, Crimea uh, is returned, uh, not to the situation before 24th of February when the war began, but the situation before 2014. The Russians will never give this up, so this is really an endless war. So what worries me is that I spent a lot of time in Syria and wars in the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iraq. It, it's becoming very like, more and more like the Syrian situation, that uh, Ukraine is becoming the arena for a, a war between Russia and, uh, in the distance, uh, the U.S., the NATO powers. Um, and uh, this war, there's no reason this war should end. And while this war goes on, the whole country gets devastated. The infrastructure gets destroyed. Millions of refugees flee. This is more and more like Syria was after 2011. And, but I think this sort of vague triumphalism uh, is obscuring just how dangerous and how bad the situation has become. Oh, Patrick, could you talk about, I mean, your assessment uh, seems, uh, like others, very similar, in fact, to what Kissinger said, uh, basically, uh, quote, pursuing the war beyond that point, that is to say, the point uh, of attempting to go to the status quo ante, that that should not be an attempt, uh, that it would not be, that it would not be about the freedom of Ukraine, but a new war against Russia itself. But could you explain what incentive, uh, given that Ukraine was in fact invaded, what incentive do the Ukrainians have to give up? And equally, what incentive does Russia have, uh, having carried out, as you say, this audacious uh, uh, invasion? I don't think anybody is uh, suggesting for a moment that the uh, Ukrainians give up in the sense of surrender. I think that, you know, they've heroically defended their uh, independence. The Russian invasion really failed in the first few days. Um, the question is, Rather, do you say that we should return to the status quo ante with guarantees to Ukraine? Because Russia is still going to be there. We did long-term guarantees for Ukraine. Uh, and to bring this war to an end with uh, an independent Ukraine capable of uh, defending itself. Once you go beyond that, you actually are acting against, to my mind, the interests, interests of Ukraine. And you put Ukraine in the position of an all-out 
war with Russia, which is a greater power, is not going to go away. Um, and that's why I think you'll end up with a war very similar to the wars once witnessed in the Middle East, from Libya to Afghanistan, in which uh, the country, which is uh, each country has in turn been sort of devastated and has never recovered. Patrick, what about the status of possible negotiations with Zelensky saying uh, earlier this week that he would only negotiate with Putin? Well, you know, it'll, it, if there are negotiations, it will probably end up like that. I mean, there were serious negotiations at the uh, um, somewhat over a month ago uh, in Turkey, in which the Ukrainians, may, you know, made a very serious uh, offers that the whole issue of the Ukraine should be pushed forward. I think it was 15 years, uh, and uh, should be. Um, shouldn't would not have to be resolved immediately. That means they don't have to accept they've lost uh, Crimea, um, and the, the sorry the whole issue of Crimea should be pushed pushed forward 15 years. So that means they don't have to discuss or give up Crimea, and the Russians don't have to uh, say we'll never leave. So there is room for negotiations there, uh, which. But one has to say the Ukrainians are not being offered that at the moment. And both sides think they can still make gains on the ground, that the battlefield still has things to offer them. Um, finally, Patrick Coburn, do you think that the weapons flow from the U.S. and the West to Ukraine is exacerbating, prolonging the war? Well, it, you know, the Ukrainians need weapons. Uh, then people trying to distinguish between defensive weapons and offensive weapons. Um, you know, that there isn't a great dividing line between the two. The Ukrainians sh should clearly be armed. But then one gets to the situation, what will happen if there are lots of anti-ship missiles uh, firing at the Russians at the Black Sea, in the Black Sea? We have 10 seconds. Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> The problem is that this war is becoming another endless war, like we've seen in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, and elsewhere, um, and all over the world. And uh, most wars don't end with a decisive victory. But if it becomes an endless war, then Ukraine will be devastated. We're going to have to leave yeah, it there. Patrick Coburn, award-winning journalist and columnist. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Stay safe.